I'm a fintech or I'm an established bank with a large, um, you know, technical team, a very best uh, technical team. But how good is my API if I have not been able to make the um, developer experience seamless, best? How if my APIs, if my world class product, uh, which I'm using, giving, uh, exposing to the world where uh, my API is not providing the right de developer experience with the uh, including the right documentation, uh, accessibility, different types of languages, everything. How, how am I going to make the uh, reap the benefits out of my API? Let's understand these. Joining us next will be Pawan Keshavamurthy, founder of Open DevX, uh, talking to us on building next gen API developer ecosystems. Welcome, Pawan. Thank you, Prashant. Uh, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Very good. So um, thank you, everybody, for uh, attending. I hope you're able to see my screen OK? Yes, yes. Um, so yeah, thanks again. So my name is Pawan. Uh, very privileged to be talking here uh, on what I think is the last talk today at API Days India. Um, you know, sincere thanks in advance to the organizers. You know, uh, John, Mehdi, and others, and of course yourself as well, Prashant, for doing a phenomenal job in creating a platform for ideas and thought leadership in the space of APIs. Uh, the topic I'm going to be talking about here is uh, something that's quite close to my heart. Um, Prashant already put it, uh, building next-gen developer ecosystems. Uh, this will be a part business, part technology architecture talk uh, focused on throwing a few, few ideas in terms of what makes developer ecosystems successful. So uh, let me begin uh, firstly about um, myself. Right, uh, My name is Pawan. As I already mentioned, I'm based here in, uh, in Bengaluru. Uh, I've worked in the API platform space for a decent part of the last uh, decade. Uh, in my previous avatar, I was a practice leader and chief architect uh, at a leading platform strategy consultancy. Uh, so that's helped with API platform adoption in multiple places, tier one telcos, BFSI, retail, uh, some healthcare as well. Uh, in North America, here in APJ, um, also worked with a couple of banks here in India, amongst others. Uh, at present, uh, um, I'm working on OpenDevX. Uh, this is an open source product that's focused on developer experience at large, um, which is I uh, would love for people to take a look at it, and try it out amongst other things. Uh, we also have an adjacent concern, uh, which is platformatory. This is a consultancy around API platform strategy and cloud native consulting. Uh, we work out of the India and the US. So, um, you know, getting uh, into the talk itself, um, you know, my story in um, every developer ecosystem talk basically begins by putting this, you know, leaderboard of global companies by market cap. Uh, predictably, you've you expected to see Fang in here, no surprises. Uh, but I think the the real point that I want to make on this slide is that um, you know, seven out of these. Ecos of, of, of these top 10 companies in the world are basically ecosystem companies at the core. Um, and, and there's probably no better elevator to this conversation about ecosystems than this. Uh, specifically, almost all of them as part of their ecosystem uh, do cater to developers. You know, we've all worked on things that touch the Microsoft, Amazon, Google the ecosystems, for example. Uh, although they didn't really start out that way, uh, but but you know the loyal developer network is a big part of what constitutes their digital ecosystem. So the order of the day is to really think and um, act like a digital native, to put it the least. Uh, one of my favorite examples of uh, you know a, a success story in ecosystems or in, in successfully building ecosystems is um, is that of our friendly neighborhood group. Um, the Ali Group, right? Uh, this portfolio is, you know, as broad as it is, quite deep and interconnected. As you can see, it features uh, anything and everything under the sun, apart from what you traditionally know uh, the Alibaba Group for, which is, you know, really around B two B commerce. So, non-core commerce revenue, predominantly from lifestyle services, 
now feeds almost as much as 50% of its total revenue so a lot of that growth is actually driven by you know cross this cross cross business cross geography data and service sharing uh, obviously apis being the channel of doing that and i think this would be a model uh, that should be extremely inspirational at least aspirational you know even for indian conglomerates and um, this should hardly seem unique uh, there's a mckinsey well known mckinsey projection of the global gross revenue from ecosystems by the year 2025 not too long from now just four years so the you know cotton code ecosystem is tantamount to creating value exchange uh, via leveraging each other's business capabilities so it's uh, it's it's in the spirit of hooking into you know um, a partner's business capabilities on demand so apis as a medium and channel is you know to me it seems like it's going to dominate the future of b2b commerce which is a pretty big thing to say uh, needless to say even in the context of india uh, you know the populous markets here will probably contribute to a very significant share of this ecosystem revenue now um just continuing on that point coming home to india um you know we're, we're producing uh, tens of unicorns every year um although india is somewhat underrepresented in the category of um, ecosystem leaders it's uh, it's quite undeniable that we hold a lot of potential uh, there are several reasons for this uh, first and foremost we have a very very broad base of engineers and builders thanks to the booming it services industry uh, secondly we also have an emerging india stack of you know connected digital digitalized services think aadhaar upi payments ecosystem etc and the great success that it has built up already uh, thirdly uh, there is a mentionable make in india push that is very adequate incentive for a lot of things uh, which is not just making in india but it's also making for india making for elsewhere as well so um, you know we we touched upon uh, you know upi and and then the india stack but it it also helps to at least mention in passing about the uh, the next big wave um, particularly in terms of you know hl7 fire whole digital health space uh, which i think is uh, quite timely uh, given the covid crisis that's ravaging us right now equally um, you know the transport and logistics sector which is quite a big deal at the at at, at india scale um, and there are some very very large ecosystem opportunities there in the mobility micro mobility spaces amongst uh, other things and uh, the central point here is that i think uh, you know the opportunity around apis particularly in india is is probably better than ever at this point so we we do have a long way to go uh, but you know this is a list of, list of makers of the api economy to you know borrow inspiration from uh, you know each company here that you see is is a, is a unicorn in its own right billion dollar valuations on an average all of them um, cater to developers as as first class citizens uh, their product offering is not just sort of uh, you know creating a channel uh, around apis but it is in fact to a decent degree centered around apis if you if you take stripe for instance that's at a 100 billion dollar valuation and the most defining quality about the company is the developer loyalty that it commands so um cursory glance uh, towards the uh, fintech scene something india features quite mentionably in uh, you know a lot of asian unicorns are obviously in india and china naturally the largest markets but um, you know you, you you might you might already be noticing that you know even amongst the indian unicorns in the space uh, many are evolving or have evolved substantial developer ecosystems already um it's 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 always interesting for me to point out um you know the importance of emergence in in an ecosystem 
um, you know, the insure tech industry, and I'm sure other speakers have spoken about it in much greater detail than me, uh, is that there's quite a transformation from what was a low margin, high volume, underwriting centric business to you know, the ever increasing portfolio of value added services that addresses some very, very fertile possibilities, which uh, even a few years ago, people would not have considered as being even adjacent to the insurance industry at large. Uh, I think we've um, homed in on the ecosystem potential point enough. This is one of my favorite videos on the internet. Uh, Steve Ballmer doing a product presentation. Uh, you know, I think uh, Microsoft might have picked up a cue out of this in, uh, in, in acquiring GitHub and a developer ecosystem. Um, but but the, the, the larger point being that uh, any developer ecosystem is, is really the law of comparative advantage at play. It's, it's not humanly possible to address the whole spectrum of use cases in any given problem domain, particularly with the high expectation thresholds that surround uh, customer experience in these times. It makes a lot of sense to instead offer interfaces to ecosystem partners, brackets developers, who can address parts of that value chain and unlock new possibilities or dimensions that you might not have envisioned. So um, that's 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 really where we come to, you know, some descriptive advice and a general descriptive state of what a futuristic developer ecosystem looks like. So. Um, the first point being, um, it's 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 quite important to understand uh, platform economics, and that's explained fairly simply. Uh, there are provider organizations and what they really bring to the table uh, are really APIs and, and 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 data. That's that's the new oil, new currency of you know everything that's monetizable. A platform provides coverage of various cross-cutting concerns and provides uh, carefully mediated access to consumers, which in other words is the developer community. Uh, the growth here is attained empirically by attaining a market fit of your products, specifically API products, and the network effects that is through developers building apps and and uh, basically you know, more consumer journeys, customer journeys, which amplify the underlying value signals of your API services and data. In in this worldview, uh, really the three the three things that we're focused on are uh, platform owners um, are the uh, provide the necessary sponsorship and governance on building such a platform. Um, the orchestrators build synergistic partnerships and have the turning tuning knobs to both supply and demand, and the network effects that we talked about previously. And of course, uh, the whole ecosystem is really focused on participants who play uh, and who are the actual core value creators in the ecosystem, be it on the provisioning and on the supply side, or be it developers who build apps more on the consumption side. So in terms of next gen, platform models, what role you play is basically directly a function of your competitive posture. Here's one example um, of, of, of how platforms really play out. Uh, this is obviously flavored to you know, the trijunction between fintechs, big tech, and banks. Uh, but you'll likely find a similar metaphor in, in, in other industries, in other disrupted, disruptable industries as well. Um, you know, each to their own uh, competitive advantage. Uh, as you can see, you know, traditional banks have uh, you know a large trust advantage, large customer base, ability to spend historic data assets, particularly around transactions, uh, and of course the entire banking infrastructure. Uh, FinTechs really crack it in terms of agility, building great customer journeys, and so on and so forth. Whereas the big techs are uh, strongly focused around you know creating platforms that scale having very large 
customer bases, having great access to behavioral data, amongst other things. So, so, so really, this involves um, creates for some interesting scenarios of where one should play in terms of value exchange, where the platform comes in, where orchestration comes in, amongst uh, amongst other things. But of course, you know there are uh, real life considerations and impacts on what model do you choose. Um, I, I, I bring up on the slide uh, some really nice reference models that I've seen uh, in the McKinsey circles around uh, around an ecosystem operating participation model. Uh, I think the key model that's of really interest here is is around the platform model and the data monetization model, which I think is uh, is quite interesting, in, not just in an India context but elsewhere globally as well. Um, I think the, the importance of both these models is that these map directly to revenue impact in the larger scheme of things, and and, and therefore they have it has the most amount of significance. And, uh, and that brings us to a a, a a point of of what is uh, dubbed as ecosystem management these days, uh, and you know the paradigm shift that is uh, bringing about from. Uh, largely from open API programs being very service focused. Uh, sure enough, there is some talk of API productization, uh, but you know, you know, in in the wild, we've seen usually, you know, an API program largely being focused around services, which is around the underlying data model, rather than being API product focused, where uh, where the API product is essentially offering a programming model with very specific end user and developer use cases. Um, and I think that's a big paradigm shift. Uh, the second sh big paradigm shift, again, in this context of next gen ecosystems is it's also the notion of centralized API management, usually an API gateway that's owned by central IT and, and, and that becoming the very basis of an ecosystem or an API program. I think there's a paradigm shift from moving that from being very centralized to being much more decentralized, empowering teams. And we'll touch upon this in one of the following slides as well. Uh, the third criteria is the indirect, potentially no monetization, uh, where the API program is largely uh, under the sponsorship of you know, an, an IT program, uh, moving from, from that towards, you know, uh, toward, towards more truly your business being provided to partners as a service. Therefore, there's an aspect of direct monetization as well and usage-based billing. Um, lastly, traditional um, enterprise architecture or um, you know EDI governance moving from there towards actual ecosystem governance, which is more focused around ecosystem metrics as to you know what's really working about your ecosystem and what isn't. Um, I know this is a pretty large topic, but um, in the in the interest of this talk, uh, there are a few points that I'd like to bring up, which may be very interesting from a standpoint of making your ecosystem successful. First point being uh, that ecosystem creation is a major goal. Uh, it's got implications across people, processes, tooling. So therefore, companies that are focused on truly making ecosystems work and need to build an API developer or ecosystem office that's chartered with the goal of ecosystem orchestration. Uh, the second point is that centralized API management tends to be largely focused around API runtime. Uh, and that consequently means that, you know, if uh, one needs to make a developer ecosystem successful, uh, you must not conflate API management with ecosystem management. You must be prepared to therefore invest into tooling, both supply side, that is your publishers, providers, as well as developer, developer, developer experience tooling. Think about nicer developer experience, developer portals. Think about the Visa developer portal experience or a Stripe developer portal experience, so on and so forth. The API supply chain uh, is, is, is where a lot of bottlenecks lie might be heterogeneous APIs, and typically in a large enterprises, uh, th th there are different lines of ownership around who owns the service, who owns the API, so on and so forth. So therefore, uh, decentralizing the supply chain 
by empowering all of these teams with sufficient autonomy to manage and uh, basically produce API products the way they ought to be done is, uh, is an important heuristic in terms of making ecosystem successful. Fourthly, um, uh, we talked about monetization models. What's indirect is often not measurable uh, and often complex monetization models can also create problems. And this is really a product management uh, issue at large. Um, it's important and very imperative that businesses tie API usage to business metrics. And this is very crucial for any open API program and the ecosystem success that's hinged on that. Fifthly, um, the distribution channels that you have, again, think about you know, whether you're doing it through your own developer marketplace portal or whether you're doing it through a third party developer portal marketplace. A great developer experience is, is a key. Uh, but uh, in a somewhat related note, it's, it's also important to mention that um, uh, a lot of uh, companies tend to conflate APIs and apps. So therefore, you know, uh, self-branded be it apps or even if, you know uh, API products, you know, care should be taken not to compete with constituents in your ecosystem. So, um, you know, cannibalization is often very harmful to ecosystems. And we've seen multiple examples of that leading to bad PR, even with uh, big digital natives like Facebook or Twitter, where often, you know, developers have borne the brunt of, you know, the ecosystem owner or the orchestrator basically cannibalizing them. Um, I think we're coming towards the end of this talk. Um, um, my, one of my uh, favorite ideas is to think about APIs at three levels around your core systems, which is really your IT systems as a service, your business domain, which is literally your business, uh, your data, and particularly your transactional APIs, contextual information as a service. And then thirdly, the tier of customer experience, which is more, you know, um, a backend as a service for specific customer journeys that are rooted in your domain. Um, somewhere between business domain and customer experience really lies at the heart of what is really monetizable and what creates successful developer ecosystems. Uh, and that in, in, in today's time is, is largely focused around data and insight APIs, particularly advanced analytics programs, churn out machine learning models, which can be provided as a service. And that tends to, you know, um, basically orchestrate use cases one might not have thought of. Uh, in general, um, these classes of APIs that supply contextual real-time information create the highest monetizable value amongst the whole category. Uh, nonetheless, the point is a product portfolio with, um, with a sound business model canvas addressing audience use cases, monetization model, and the whole API classification itself is very important in terms of organizing a proper API catalog. And uh, that brings us uh, towards uh, towards a closure. Um, there, there is a there is an ecosystem reference architecture that we see emerging. Um, the, the notion of an ecosystem office or an API back office to cover the supply side concerns in a typical large organization or even in a SaaS organization format for that matter. Uh, and on the front office side is is really an API network, a community, uh, which is a distribution channel right um of um you know of of loyal developers and of course you know in terms of how do you um, you know engage developers and manage developer relationships is yet another topic worthy of discussion by itself uh the, the core of the ecosystem is is really in the cross-cutting concerns such as managing api sources which might be multiple different it systems api gateways lifecycle management systems and so on and finally, also tying this into uh, usage-based billing and commerce providers. You know, think about Stripes, the Curly's of the world. So that ecosystem platform is, is, is I think, one of the keys to success. 
uh, and of course finally your your platform might be unique to you it's it's it's, it's always a, a derivative of the sort of shared kernel of product requirements and not a platform for the sake of a platform we close with uh, really what i think constitutes a four point roadmap towards building successful ecosystems it's really around organizing your services and data catalog we talked about this rigorous productization of apis data amongst other things thirdly a solid monetization model and fourthly as a responsible ecosystem exercising governance so um, a lot of ideas um, out here um, would love to um, share your questions and feedback but i will pause here for feedback or questions great session pavan uh just uh, jump to the questions right away so what are the success criteria of apis and how do you measure the success of an api give an example absolutely great question prashant uh, what i have tended to see in industry is that uh, many many provider organizations tend to measure api success based on call volume metrics um, amongst other things uh, i would say some more defining qualities would be uh, you know strong usage metrics and engagement metrics from the intended developer audience you know you can look at the number of apps per api product um, you can look at the average revenue per api product you can also look at average revenue per api product by developer or by average revenue per customer per api product and so many different uh, metrics there of i think there tend to be hard metrics and soft metrics prashant uh, primarily mm. hard metrics tend to be measured by you know a monetary metric Number. and soft metrics tend to be measured much more in terms of call volumes and and, and more technical metrics so what right. you choose is, is is really up to you but i think those would either individually or together uh, be good metrics to measure what's successful and what isn't okay yes uh that's all pavan uh nothing else i think only one question yeah. well then so, um, that was really insightful yes uh, thanks you for uh, joining us here uh, and uh, sharing your thoughts uh, at api days live india 2021 thank you so much prashant uh, great job by all the organizers uh, including yourself mehdi john um, this is some fantastic work by all of you thank you thank you now we'll move on to the closing section of api days live india 2021 i'll be joined here by john shiel co-organizer prasant um hey john great um great to have such a, a a wide range and and some really deep uh uh presentations from from all our speakers what were some of the highlights uh for you of the day uh definitely learning uh, more about how uh, indian banks and the financial institutions are evolving or digitizing leveraging apis uh, to you know uh, equip themselves to fend off competition and also to work more closely with fintechs is a the just a key takeaway uh, or one of the best key takeaways there yeah okay well i guess it wasn't just uh, financial institutions though because we also heard about healthcare uh, uh retail uh, supply chain various uh, other other aspects uh different parts of the uh of the economy that uh, are really being uh improved and and uh, uh driven harder uh through uh through being able to leverage APIs i guess i i particularly yeah. enjoyed the the keynote presenters um uh, uh Pravina, uh talking about um Uh, what npci have achieved with uh, with upi and uh, and also what uh, uh, uh ramesh at uh at mosap 
is, is, is doing to bring uh, technologies that have really been pioneered in, uh, in India to, to other countries that can, can really, really use them. But I, I guess uh, a lot of great, uh, great insight all around. Um, yes, and a lot on a lot of sessions on the technical aspects, the tools, the products, uh, the processes, and DevOps. Basically, um, it was really uh, useful. Okay, and I, I can't uh, thank enough the team behind the, the cameras um, because we we actually have a team that's uh, the API Days team is spread across countries like. Uh, the, the US, France, uh, got, we've got somebody in Colombia, somebody else in Guatemala, uh, and other team members joining us from, from other parts, all to, uh, to make this, uh, all, all to make this happen. Um, and uh, I, I think uh, on the technical standpoint, we've managed this, even though uh, certain parts of India are still suffering the aftermath of that uh, cyclone that, uh, that went through uh, Gujarat a few days ago. Uh, <clears throat> so we're, we're very glad that everybody can uh, could join us. Uh, <clears throat> I think we, um, we, we're, we're very glad that we ran this, uh, this, this conference. We, were, um, we are concerned about uh, the health situation in India. Um, and we, we hope that everybody uh, uh, <clears throat> Stays uh, stays safe and and keeps their their families and and people close to them them safe, um, but uh, and I, I guess from from your perspective, Prasanth, I mean, what what are some of the other things that you um you 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 really enjoyed about the day? So I uh, really enjoyed the um, audience support. I have been uh, receiving online, offline uh, feedback, uh, starting from the right from the uh, start of the keynote session onwards. Uh, I have received uh, a number of feedback. Uh, uh, people sharing, uh, talk, uh, commenting on their uh, our good speaker lineup or the, the particular sessions, everything. So it has been a really you know. Uh, fulfilling uh, experience to be uh, working with you guys to bring up uh, this show to uh, India. Mm, great. So um, I, I guess we'd like to thank all the audience um, for, for for coming to uh, to learn and share. Uh, I'm, I'm really envious, um, Prasant, that um, where, where you're based, uh, your background, uh, you, you look like you have a jungle behind you. I can hear the birds uh, singing and the bird calls. Um, I'm first chance I get. I'm I'm going to Kerala and I'm going to locate your your hometown and, and visit you. But, um, yes, most welcome. Yeah. So we we would also like to uh, thank our our sponsors very much. So uh, the reason we're able to to bring this uh, conference. Um, to you with uh, with great speakers is through the support of our, our sponsors, uh, Confluent, IBM, uh, Sendbird, New Relic, Nginx, uh, Fivetran, and of course our community partner, uh, DevOps Institute. Um, but um, that's uh, that's been really valuable, and we hope that everybody has. Um, Managed to uh, visit the, uh, the the sponsors. Um, there are um, a couple of things in the chat. So a lot of people have been asking, uh, will the recordings be available? And the good news is that the recordings will be published uh, on the API Days official YouTube channel uh, next week, and uh, you you'll be able to find them. You don't have to go hunting uh, on the YouTube uh, for for them. There is a URL that's been distributed in the in the chat on the API Days uh, global uh, website. Um, watch now. Now you can see recordings of previous conferences, but you'll be able to see recordings of this conference um, uh, early next week. And our next conference. Uh, when's our next conference, Prasa? It's, it's uh, on. Yeah, it's on June thirtieth, July first, and July second. Um, three days 
I think actually two days, but uh, spread across three days because of the different time zones. Uh, our next conference is Interface, a fully virtual global conference, uh, July 30, June 30th to July 2nd. And uh, it will uh, uh, will bring together to you a interesting lineup of speakers across the globe, uh, both from the business and the technology aspects across industries. And you'll get to learn a lot from being there. So please do join us there. Right. And we're going to go to uh, a networking room. It's an online networking room called Spatial Chat. Uh, there is a URL that's been posted in the chat window. And uh, if you'd like to come backstage and, and meet the, the other audience members and um, the uh, and, and some of the speakers and, and us, then feel free to, uh, to join us there. Uh, so thank you. Thank you very much.